Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, you can also catch us over on YouTube, uh, Daily Motion, Blip.tv, and uh, Stitcher.com, uh, as well as subscribe uh, at our website over at Quicksurf.com. You can uh, catch an Og Vorbis, uh, an MP3, or a uh, video feed of the show and subscribe to it using your podcatcher of choice. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for uh, this episode. Some pretty cool stuff I found while uh, perusing the internet, if you will. Uh, over at TechCrunch, Nest, we all have heard of Nest, right? They make the little smart thermostat thing. They have acquired My Energy to boost their home energy management tools. Uh, Nest proved that energy monitoring can be tantalizing and it's about to get even better. The company just announced that it has acquired My Energy to further enhance its suite of monitoring tools. The deals of the term were not released. So originally uh, it was called Earth Aid. Um, they launched an online dashboard in 2009 as one of its energy monitoring solutions. It's similar to Energy Savvy, Google's Power Meter, and Microsoft's Home. Uh, Earth Aid and now My Energy provides consumers with information on how much electricity, water, and natural gas they use, and how much they spend on these utilities. You know, you ca you can't expect to appropriately manage if you if you don't know where you're at. So you know, monitoring does come into play here to a small degree. So pretty interesting. Uh, we'll see uh, how that comes about. From uh, CoolestGadgets.com, Star Trek, the next generation Enterprise D ship. That's right. Trekkies, here's something for you. It's a $59.99 U.S. currency Star Trek TNG Enterprise D ship. It'd make any Star Trek fan drool at the mouth. If you're a seasoned fan who has seen done it all, how about just licking your lips in anticipation? The uh, Enterprise D ship comes across as a detailed 17-inch model of the USS Enterprise D and as you and as you use your imagination to fly it through new frontiers uh, coming across imaginary aliens and being involved in epic space battles with the narrowest of escapes it will also be made all the more realistic with the inclusion of sound effects and sayings by good old Captain Picard so pretty interesting Definitely check it out if you are a Star Trek fan. From Geeky Gadgets, Denon has uh, announced a, a new receiver. It's the AVR X4000 receiver. It supports 4K video, AirPlay, and Spotify. This is pretty neat. Uh, they've added a new edition of network-capable AVR receivers, the in-command model uh, AVR X4000 AV receiver. It's the flagship of the new range and is equipped with 4K pass-through along with HDTV to 4K upscaling and 125 watts of power per channel and a remote control app for iOS, Android, or web browsers. Other features, uh, Spotify, AirPlay, and DNLA 1.5 support together with 7.2 surround sound output with Odyssey DSX, Dolby Pro Logic 2Z, or DTS Neo X encoding, you have seven HDMI inputs and three outputs, home automation compatibility, multi room control, and MP3 audio restoration. Woo! It's a $1,300 receiver. The others in the lineup are about $900 for the X3000 and $650 for the X2000. So definitely check it out. I thought this was pretty awesome. Uh, by all means, if you're in the market for a new receiver, this may be it for you. Also from Geeky Gadget, Google Glass Explorer Edition gets unboxed. There's a video they have posted here um, of the Google Ga Glass Explorer Edition being unboxed from the guys over at Fandroid. Have a look at the video. 
Um, I, you know, personally, I'm a little underwhelmed by Google Glass. I understand why everyone is like, Whoa! you know, all the tech people out there are like, Whoa! but, you know, frankly, I, I don't like wearing glasses, you know, between a watch and a glass. I don't think either one of them I really want or need. My phone is serving me just fine thus far, but between the two of them, I'd rather have the watch because it seems more natural. You know, you raise your wrist up. I've said this before, you know, you raise your wrist up to see what time it is. That is really socially accepted. You know, you can raise your wrist up to maybe see a text message or something of that nature. Um, you know, glass just seems to me to be really super intrusive, but you know, if you're looking, uh, for a Google glass or looking to get it, this is a pretty neat unboxing. So definitely check it out from read, write web enterprise there. They have a, um, an article here posted. It's a study open source delivers superior quality up to a point. So, uh, I thought this was a pretty interesting article. Um, you know, I, I uh, you know, have been a software developer for a long time. I've done a fair amount of proprietary as well as open source based coding. And, you know, uh, a lot of what's in this article, I'm not going to go through the, the meat and potatoes of the article here, but a lot of what's in the article, I think I agree with, um, you know, you can tend to see, uh, you know, the patterns described here quite a bit. Um, so definitely it's an interesting read. Definitely check it out from Ars Technica in their technology lab information technology section. Cray brings top super supercomputer tech to businesses for a mere $500,000 in us currency. Wow. Cray, the company that built the world's fastest supercomputer at one point in time, uh, is bringing its next generation of supercomputer technology to regular old business customers with systems starting at just half a million dollars. The new XC30AC systems to, uh, being announced range in price from 500000 to roughly $3 million, providing speeds from uh, 22 to 176 teraflops. That's just a fraction of the speed of the aforementioned world's fastest supercomputer, the $60 million Titan, which clocks in at 17.59 petaflops. Uh, but uh, all the processors are interconnected. It's a step up from those used to, you know, having, a, you know, rather relatively small clusters. And for, you know, for the price, you're actually getting a lot of bang. So, you know, definitely check this out. I thought this was pretty neat. You know, I, if I had the money, I would probably start at the entry level, you know, you know, kind of like as a home server. This to me seems like perfect for a, uh, not necessarily a large business, but you know, if you need a lot of processing for a medium size, small to medium size business, or, you know, a home type thing, um, you know, I can totally see something like this, uh, pretty neat. Definitely look into that. From Geeky Gadgets, Adobe Creative Cloud subscription service to kill off the Creative Suite. Adobe has announced you can no longer buy boxed versions of the Creative Suite. It's all Creative Cloud. Uh, I am a, a Creative Cloud user. This I have no problem with. Um, definitely, uh, you know, those that are used to the box suites may have some trouble adjusting because you do get software updates. <laughs> Sometimes they do mess up your workflow, uh, but definitely, uh, you know, I thought this was pretty interesting. From Ars Technica, why not write tests in line with code? Hmm, interesting. Chris Devereaux has recently been reading up on literate programming, an innovative and mostly unused approach to programming developed by Donald Newth in the 1970s. It got him do, to do a better job of explaining what code does than prose does, he writes in his question. Also, tests have had the big advantage of verifying their own accuracy. Still, Chris has never seen tests written in line with the code they test. Why not? Well, a couple of reasons. Bigger files, and the code is definitely less clear. Um, 
readability is one of the things for code maintainability, particularly in the long term. Readability is huge. Code bloat, you know, if you've got your tests in line, it's really hard to separate test code from production code. You end up, you know, I mean, there are a couple of reasons why, you know, personally, I don't think I would support that. I'm very much in favor of writing test units while you develop, you know, unit tests while you develop code, but I don't think that you should have them in line. Um, it just really affects more than anything code flow and readability, which in turn affects your long-term maintainability of the code. Generally not a good idea. From uh, CNETnews.com, can expensive audio cables improve the sound of a hi-fi system? Hmm. This is from uh, Steve Gutenberg. He is uh, kind of an audio person. Some of the stories he's written in the past, I totally disagree with. Uh, I kind of agree and disagree with this particular story. Um, if you're dealing with lower you know, voltage and power levels, a quality cable can make a difference. However, once you start getting up into where you're running, you know, you have an amplifier and a speaker and you're running a couple hundred watts through to this speaker, it makes significantly less, you know, difference, the quality of the cable in my own experience. However, when you're dealing with line level uh, and microphone level uh, signals, definitely... <laughs> It makes a difference. Uh, so um, I thought it was an interesting read, and I, you know, thought that I would uh, share it with uh, you guys and see what you think about it. Uh, the last story that we have is from Make Magazine: Using BeagleBone to control a powerful upper upper body exoskeleton. This is pretty neat. I really liked this. Nick McGill is a senior mechanical and electrical engineering student at the University of Pennsylvania. His uh, design team has developed a powered upper body exoskeleton for use in physical therapy and assistive mobility applications. We've, they've named the suit Titan after the powerful deities of incredible strength and stamina in Greek mythology. And they have a video of what it's all about. It's awesome. Definitely check this out. You know, I can totally see something like this morphing into uh, an Iron Man-like suit. And by the way, I did see uh, Iron Man 3 over the weekend, Sunday afternoon. However, I, as I stated before, I'm not adverse to uh, going to see it again at some point. If anybody in the uh, North Bay area wants to go see it, uh, shoot me an email, geekinator at quickshift.com. I do kind of have a full schedule uh, this upcoming week and weekend, but... Um, you know, if there's anybody who wants to see it, by all means, let me know. With that, I will see all of you on the next episode. Thanks uh, for watching. Uh, please do uh, subscribe if, if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you, and I'll see you then.